decals. We don't need no stinking decals. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Silhouette Studio and the Silhouette Cutter to be able to cut your own masks and break free from the decal tyranny. So we'll be using that to create masks from the decals that come with the kit or stuff that you find online and paint the insignia as God intended. So here we go into the de into the Silhouette Studio. All right, so I just open up the Silhouette Studio and I have a JPEG of my decal sheet. We're gonna use the trace tool located on the right and drag to select the area of the decal. Once you have it outlined, we're going to play with the threshold to make it so it shows the outline, but not too much noise or anything. We want to have a good outline. I've also found it, you don't want to have the decal size at this point. It's actually better that it's bigger. Once we have it, we're going to press that trace button, and you'll see that it has traced the outline of everything there in red. Next, we need to clean it up. So I'm going to use that eraser tool. And we're just going to clean up some of the other stuff like the decal number or just some weird noise that has come into the scan. So we'll show you another example of this. This time we're going to do the USAF insignia there. So we have selected our trace outline area. And already off the bat, it's pretty good, but we're still going to need to play with that threshold to make sure we've got some crisper lines, we don't have a lot of noise. Then we press the trace, and then we have it all nice and outlined in red. If you want to, you can also zoom in on the project and you'll notice right there the line just isn't exactly a line it's made more of a curve so if we want to we can actually make a straight line and edit that out there with the line tool if you wanted to also you can just use the line tool to just outline the insignia as well it does take a little bit more time but it's going to definitely give you a straight line as opposed to the tracing So here we have the USAF insignia. As you can see, I am just using the line tool to make the outline. This will make sure that you have very uniform lines for each of these cuts instead of getting into a curve. And you just follow and trace the outline of the letter until you have everything all traced out. So once we have the insignia, you can actually resize it and you would measure your decal sheet and just make sure that they match. So if I wanted to have this one be as close as possible to 13 millimeters, that's pretty dang close. So we'll be able to take that. Then once we are done there, we can send it over to our, our studio here, there. And this is going to then send it over to the printer. Once you have all of your design ready, you'll go to the send menu and you'll take note of all the different settings that you would have, which uh, we will not go over in this video. All right, and it is just that easy. Now, the next step when you gotta look at is what materials are you gonna run through your silhouette? Well, there's a bunch of different ones that I've tested and so far they all are pretty similar in performance. I have a sheet of Tamiya tape and I was expecting really good things with this, but there is a bit of a learning curve to it. Um, probably can't see on there, but it's just riddled with all sorts of points where the cutter was ripping it off and things like that. So be forewarned with that, but these obviously are the crown standard for curved surfaces. So there's that. The other one that I've looked at is just Oracle 631. When you're looking at these, make sure you're doing the non-permanent type. When we talk about the adhesive, I used the permanent adhesive and yeah, it was uh, bonded really well to the paint enough to rip it off. So that's not good. 
but um, using the Oracle 631 is, you know, about the same tacky level as uh, anything else that we've looked at. The other thing that I like about these is I can go in and do clear clear to it. So there is that. The other one that I've been using hands down because it's been recommended by a bunch of other people and so far it's been working great is the Aura Mask 810. So this is going to be more of a gray and it's nice and thin, a little bit thinner, but probably have to get some kind of real high end testing device to feel the difference, but your hands you can feel a little teeny difference, but they're, they're pretty close. The Aura Mask has been my go-to lately that I've been using. The surprising result is just Hobby Lobby, the Paper Studio stencil material. So this one by far the cheapest, um, if, especially if you're getting them on their 40% off or whatever. And, you know, these are pretty good. I think they do feel a little bit thicker, um, but they do the job. I've done it on a few things already and the, you know, they seem to be cutting fine compared to all the other stuff. Um, no gripes about anything else. Didn't have much in the way of like paint lift or anything there. So I think that these are very, very versatile. I'm going to have to experiment more with these in the coming months of just doing stencils on various stuff that I've been working on. So you can see my bomber in the background and I've been doing some stenciling on and a few other things. So I'm going to experiment with some of them, the different papers that we have and see which one is king. But so far, initial tests, pretty similar. All right, well, until next time.